So let's go ahead and use this property of the fact that GR and HR are n naught over 2 periodic. And we're going to use that to simplify equation 1 right here. Equation 1 says that F sub R is equal to G of R plus W sub n naught to the R times H of R. So let's simplify this equation. Let's use the property that g of r and h of r are n naught over 2 periodic. So what that means is for some fixed value of r, that g of r is equal to g sub r plus n naught over 2. That's exactly what it means for this to be n naught over 2 periodic. Same thing for h of r. For any fixed value of r, if I add n naught over 2, to that value, I get back the exact same value. Again, that's just the definition of being n naught over 2 periodic. So we have equation 2 here, and we have equation 3 here for g of r and h of r. Also, let's do this other computation. Let's compute what w sub n naught raised to the power of r plus n naught over 2 is. So again, I've taken r and I've tacked on n naught over 2 to it. From here to here, we're just using the property of exponents. Instead of writing it as a sum, I can write it as a product. So n naught over 2 plus r. I haven't really changed anything here. If we go back to the definition of how w sub n naught is defined, that is defined as e to the minus j 2 pi over n naught. If you raise that to n naught over 2, you end up with e to the minus j pi. Well, a to the minus e to the minus j pi is just a real valued number, and it's equal to minus 1. So this quantity, w sub n naught raised to the r plus n naught over 2, is actually just equal to a negative w sub n naught to the r. So it also has this nice property where it's not periodic, but by tacking on n naught over 2, we actually get the negative of w sub n naught to the r. So if we use equation 2 and equation 3 and equation 4, if we use those and go back to equation 1 on the previous chart, we can actually write f sub r plus n naught over 2 equals g of r minus w sub n naught to the r times h of r. So what we really did is we took our equation 1 and we added n naught over 2 to every r. So that's why we started with f of r sub r, and we wrote it as f sub r plus n naught over 2 equals, we should have had g sub r plus n naught over 2 here, but we used equation 2 to replace g sub r plus n naught over 2 with g sub r. Similarly, we should have had plus w sub n naught to the r plus n naught over 2, but we used equation 4. We know that that's equal to a negative w sub n naught to the r, so that turned into negative w sub n naught to the r. And then finally, we should have had h sub r plus n naught over 2, but using equation 3, we know that that is equal to h sub r. So we've been able to manipulate equation 1 into this form for when r is equal to r plus n naught over 2. So now really what we have is we have two nice equations. We have this equation, which is equation 1, f sub r is equal to g sub r plus w sub n naught to the r times h sub r. And we also have this equation that we just developed for all r plus n naught over 2. It looks very similar. There's a g sub r here, there's an h sub r here. There's also the same coefficient right here, w sub n naught to the r. The only difference is that there's a minus sign. So these two equations are very useful. I can actually use this equation to compute the first n naught over 2 points, and I can use this equation right here to compute the last n naught over 2 points. This is interesting because to do this computation, it only requires me to compute g sub r one time, and I can actually use it twice. I can use it here, and I can use it here. Same thing with h sub r. Once I compute h sub r, I get to use h sub r twice. I get to use it to compute f sub r, and I get to use h sub r to compute f sub r plus n naught over 2. Same thing happens with the w term. Once I know what w sub n naught to the r is, I can use it to compute f sub r, and I can use it right here to compute f sub r plus n naught over 2. So this is kind of interesting. Once I know this value, and this value, and this value, 
I can get two points of my DFT, namely F sub R and F sub R plus N naught over 2, and I only have to do one multiplication, this multiplication right here. Once I compute this product, I get to use it here, and I get to use it here. So we can get two points in the DFT using just one multiplication. And that is very important for simplifying the number of computations that we want to do. We can actually represent these equations graphically. Once I know what g sub r is, and once I know what h sub r is, this figure right here tells me how to compute f sub r and f sub r plus n naught over 2. So I also need to know what the quantity w sub n naught to the r is. But once I know gr, hr, and the w term, I can get out both of these points in the DFT using these equations. So these equations right here are the exact same equations we had on the previous chart, but this butterfly circuit or butterfly representation is a way to graphically represent these equations, and it kind of makes it clear that, yeah, given these, these two things in W, I get out two points in my DFT. So this is kind of a nice way to visualize what's going on as we do these computations. So let's think about what we've accomplished here. If somebody gave us all of the GRs and all of the HRs, so this is a sequence on R and this is a sequence on R, if I wanted to compute all of the FRs, these are the equations that I would use. I would let R start at 0, and I would com compute this for R equals 0, and I'd compute this for R equals to 1. And as I was computing this for R equals 0 and this for R equals to 1, I would also be computing this for R equals n over 2 and r equals n over 2 plus 1, and as r range from 0 all the way up to n over 2 minus 1, I would get a total of n naught over n naught terms out for the fr. To do all these computations, I'm being smart about how I do my multiplications. Each time I only do this product one time, so I end up only having to do one multiplication to get out two points in my DFT. I do have to do an addition or a subtraction each time, so the number of additions doesn't change, it's still n naught, but I'm able to have the number of complex multiplications by using this set of equations. So before we required n naught complex additions and n naught complex multiplications, I've been able to work it to where I only need n naught over 2 complex multiplications, so we've been able to reduce it by a factor of 2. However, to do this, I need to know what g of r and h of r are. Nobody's just going to hand those to me. I actually need to compute them. So how are we going to compute g of r and h of r? Well, let's just break it down again. Before, we said, I want to compute the fr. How am I going to do that? We pretended as if somebody gave us g of r and h of r. And now the question is, well, how do I get g of r and h of r? Well, let's just break those down into halves again. Let's continue this process. Given g of k and h of k, which are both length n not over 2, Let's break those down into two and not over four sequences. And then I can do all the math I just did on the previous charts to efficiently compute g of k and h of k. Well, then we'll, when we got to the end of that, we would ask ourselves, well, how do I get the coefficients I need to compute those? Well, we'll break those n not over four sequences down into n not over eight sequences. And we just keep going. Each time we break it in half and we break it in half, we break it in half. We've assumed that n naught is an even number. Eventually, we are going to arrive at a point where we have to have a two-point sequence that we break into half, and then we end up with a one-point sequence. So each time we break down our sequence into halves, we can think of this as a stage. We've already established that at each stage, what we need is n naught over two complex multiplications and n not complex additions. So that's what we need for each stage. How many stages are there? Well, that's easy to figure out. We can figure out the number of stages just by taking the logarithm base 2. For instance, if I had n not equal to 8, I would divide that in half to get 4, I'd divide it in half to get 2, and then I'd divide it in half to get 3, or half to get 1, and that would be a total of 3 stages. So log 2 of 8 is 3. So the log base 2 of n naught always tells me how many times are you going to have to break this sequence into half to get down to a one-point sequence. 
So the total number of stages will be log 2 of n naught, and the number of operations we're going to have to perform on each one of these stages is proportional to n naught. So the overall complexity, once we're all done, is going to be the number of stages, log 2 of n naught, times the number of operations required, which you could think of as n naught plus n naught over 2, which is 1 and a half n naught. But again, when we do analysis on the order of operations, we don't care about leading factors like 1 and a half, so we just call it n naught. So our final overall complexity, if we take this approach in breaking our sequence down into half and half and half, and being smart about how we manage those factors, and only computing multiplications one time, and then using them efficiently, we can get down to only needing n naught times log 2 n naught operations. And this is why this approach is called FAST. It's called the FAST Fourier transform. It's an implementation, a way to do the DFT that's efficient, and it only requires n log n operations, as opposed to n squared operations that a brute force DFT implementation would require.